What's up guys, welcome back to Newswave. It looks like Nintendo has deployed the Nintendo Ninjas going after that Mario 64 PC port that we had talked about last week. We're gonna go over that today and what Nintendo's doing, which also includes ripping down YouTube videos that feature footage of that game. Also, we gotta talk a bit about Microsoft as they have pretty much come out now and confirmed that they made a bit of a mistake around that Series X event that uh, was a pretty mixed reception at best for a lot of fans. And then also another PlayStation VR 2 patent looks interesting as it could include not only full body tracking, but also the ability to fight against motion sickness. As always guys, if you enjoy these videos, make sure that like button helps out a ton. And if you're brand new here, hit that red subscribe button down below as we head towards 500,000 subscribers. And we're gonna start today with Mafia. Now Mafia, the game, of course, Mafia 3 was the most recent one, but the Twitter account for Mafia has been pretty quiet actually since August of 2018. Nothing's really been going on, at least until yesterday when they tweeted out just straight up family. Which does, of course, lead into the idea that the rumor of a Mafia 2 remaster, maybe even Mafia 1 and 2 remaster, could be a thing. There's also the possibility that Mafia 4, maybe, gets shown, but I, I am kind of leaning more towards the remaster that could be coming up soon-ish, and maybe a Mafia a 4 game maybe is saved for, like, next-gen consoles, going into, like, the Series X and the PlayStation 5 as, like, exclusive to those platforms, rather than just, like, a cross-gen type game. I think a remaster works better as a cross-gen, and Mafia 2 was very popular, people really liked it, and if they bring it up to current standards, it'd be pretty cool, like, standards with, uh, like, the PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Xbox One Series X, and hey, maybe they also have a remastered version for the Switch. It could be pretty neat, but something is definitely going on right now with Mafia. We'll just have to wait and see what they have. Also, it turns out that Nintendo does indeed have plans to announce more games for 2020. Shocker, right? Yeah, they, they of course put that slide out that looked pretty, pretty barren, kind of bleak <laughs> for what was coming up with the last dated game, I guess is Clubhouse Games. For first party stuff, there's Deadly Premonition 2 that's in July. Otherwise though, it's pretty quiet after that, like nothing. Well, as they were kind of putting out guidance for their investors, you can see the tweet here. This is from Robert Safan saying, he mentions there are other titles they plan to release this year in addition to those already announced. However, it may be difficult to finish development during the current situation as employees are working from home. Their forecast assumes they will release as planned. So that is, that's the biggest situation right now, obviously in the world is the situation around the pandemic and the virus, which, has forced many studios to start doing remote work from home and they're not all equipped or ready for that like at all. So there has been a lot of struggles behind the scenes to try to get certain games ready to go and even some games quietly, which this kind of works in Nintendo's favor where they don't announce a game way in advance every time. Like, I mean, Breath of the Wild, Metroid Prime 4, those are examples of games that were announced way in advance and they, they kind of suffered for that being pushed back. Even Breath of the Wild ending up on a whole nother platform later on on the Switch alongside the Wii U. But if a game hasn't technically been announced and it's been pushed to the following year, no one really ever knew it was delayed. But I still hope that something like Paper Mario is ready to go this year. And I do hope that that Mario remastered collection that has been heavily rumored is also ready. But yeah, Surprise, Nintendo uh, isn't quite done yet announcing games for the year. And while we're talking about companies who seem to be teasing announcements that will then tease games in the future, uh, Sega's CBO did talk in an interview about how there are some sort of Sonic announcements coming up. Remember, we were supposed to hear about Sonic stuff every month, that didn't happen. And then we were supposed to get something at South by Southwest and that didn't happen. And then they were gonna do something with their own Sega Direct and uh, we're still kind of waiting for that one, but this is what they had to say in the interview. Yes, we have some exciting news that we can't wait to share, but you'll have to stay tuned for details and then stay tuned to our friend Sonic's just getting started. And they also talked about the movie and how that did really well for them, but Sonic, maybe a new, I guess a new Sonic game, but is it Sonic Mania 2 or is it another 3D Sonic game? Maybe they really do try Sonic Adventure 3 or they try Sonic, Forces 2. Ugh, let's, just, let's just do Mania 2 and call it, a, call it a year. And guys, with some of the quick news out of the way, let's get into the bigger stuff. Let's start right away with this Mario 64 port to the PC. Now this, of course, was made possible after the original source code was 
basically reverse engineered so that it could be ported to pretty much anything. I think at one point they were even working to port it to like the PlayStation 2, but a PC port did end up online kind of out of nowhere. Like there were, there were talks in discords and behind the scenes and stuff about this happening at some point, but at, then it just dropped online. I don't know, we had a link, you could download it. It was like DirectX 12 fully, we had 4K widescreen, the whole thing. And there's a reason I didn't show any footage from that video that was online because I had a strong feeling that it wouldn't last more than 48 hours before Nintendo came knocking and the Nintendo Ninjas were eventually deployed. And, and they were, go figure, right? I think I even mentioned it then. And I noticed a lot of your comments <laughs> down in the comment section of that video when we first talked about this port saying, yep, here come the Nintendo Ninjas. Yeah, that's, that's a thing. And it looks like they have acted very quickly. Several download links on different file hosting sites were ripped down very, very quickly, almost as fast as they were being put up. Someone would share it, and then like an hour later, boom, it was gone. Now, Torrent Freak did manage to grab some of the complaints that were being filed to Google, and you can see them here saying, the copyrighted work is Nintendo's Super Mario 64 video game, including the audio, visual work, software, and fictional character depictions covered by US copyright regulations. Uh, and then it also says the report fi the reported file contains an unauthorized derivative work based on Nintendo's copyrighted work. And this is from Wildwood Law Group LLC, who generally works alongside Nintendo to do cease and desist, for example, with different Pokemon ROM hacks and, and all kinds of stuff. I mean, we we've seen Nintendo go after all different types of fan projects and also We've seen them go after ROM sites that are uh, legally illegally distributing, right? Uh, different ROM files, which are basically Nintendo's games and their property. That's the biggest thing we run into here. And while ROM hacks are not immune to this because it does happen quite a bit where Nintendo will cease and desist ROM hacks, this certainly shot up to the top of their priority list because it wasn't distributing a ROM hack, a hack for a game that you technically have to own. This was just the, the entire game being distributed. Like that was it. It's like, oh, here's Mario 64 that now works on your Windows PC without an emulator that's open source and legal. Just go ahead and download it, DirectX 12, widescreen, the whole thing, 4K. Yeah, you really can't distribute games necessarily online without getting into trouble. And it's not even just like Nintendo going after other people for ROMs. Remember, Sony's done some crazy stuff too with this. Uh, Microsoft isn't as, Microsoft's like pulled down like the fan Halo game and stuff, but like, you remember Sony? They bought a PlayStation 4 from somebody on eBay that had ROMs on the system and games just to get it, so they had the proof and then they sued the guy. So yeah, it's, they, they all go after him, but Nintendo was just always out there doing it pretty much constantly. <laughs> I think the part that most people are less understanding about is Nintendo actually going around and ripping down videos on YouTube that showcase the game on the PC. All the cool like modifications and texture, all this stuff. It looks really, really cool, right? Nintendo's going around and ripping those down. And that's where it gets into a gray area because Technically, yes, we're using Nintendo's IP in videos, and if they do not want it shown, they I guess they technically can have it taken down. That's one of the reasons I, like I said, didn't show any video of it because I had a strong feeling it was going to happen. Nintendo, of course, for years and years, up until like two or three years ago, I think, when they had the Nintendo's creators program pretty much dissolved, they would just take revenue and claim videos anyway with their IPs, and now with this Mario game, they were just straight up ripping them down completely. They've done it with Pokemon leaks. Most recently with, uh, there was a Pokemon leak that came out of course for Sword and Shield. They struck channels over that that showed the leaks. And we've even seen Naughty Dog and, and Sony and stuff uh, go after apparently Last of Us 2 leaks. It's a mess online when it comes to this stuff. But uh, yeah, Nintendo, Nintendo Ninjas, they were out in full force starting Friday throughout the weekend. And that Mario uh, PC port is, uh, it was the target. Next up, let's talk about a, a kind of a funny, but kind of a weird story at the same time. Fortnite put up a video for a new mode that they had coming out. And what's interesting about this, it's like their party royale, I guess, where you just kind of hang out in a room, it seems. But what was weird about this is in the video, Kirby was visible. Yeah, you, you can actually see him in the, in the back there. But what was funny about this whole situation is, Kirby was only visible 
on Nintendo's channel, Nintendo's trailer for the game. Even though Kirby was technically in Sony's and Microsoft's trailer, eh, they censored him. They basically blurred Kirby out <laughs> completely. And it caught some people off guard when they were watching the trailer as people started to post on social media about this blurring of Kirby, this censoring of Kirby. But it's not necessarily too surprising that Kirby would not show up, of course, on Sony's channel or Microsoft's channel. I actually think it's kind of strange that Kirby was in the Fortnite trailer at all. I, I don't really know why that was. I don't, I don't know if Nintendo necessarily uh, put Kirby in there because I have a strong feeling that it was actually Nintendo that censored Kirby out of PlayStation and Xbox's channels when it comes to that, unless both Sony and Microsoft came together and said, well, we gotta, we gotta blur out Kirby. We're not supposed to be using Nintendo's IPs. It's, it'd be strange if they coordinated and it wasn't just Nintendo that said, yeah, you can't have Kirby on your channel. We're gonna go ahead and blur him. It's, it's, an, it's an odd thing to see pop up this, this weird censorship over Kirby blurring Kirby out, but it happened. It was weird and uh, apparently no Kirby on Sony or Microsoft's channel for Fortnite. Next up, let's talk about Microsoft and their Series X and their most recent presentation that was supposed to be about all kinds of next generation gameplay. There was just one problem. There was like two minutes of gameplay and like 24 minutes or something of like cinematics and all of that. It was certainly a letdown for a lot of people who are expecting to tune into this show and see all kinds of really cool stuff happening in what feels like a more, I would say, real time gameplay event didn't necessarily happen. The big one was Assassin's Creed Valhalla as that was hyped up by not only Microsoft, but also Ubisoft. Well, people of course took to the internet to get pretty frustrated, complain about it, point it out. And interestingly enough, Microsoft responded, specifically Aaron Greenberg. This is what he said on Twitter. Had we not said anything and just shown May inside Xbox show like we did last month, I suspect reactions might've been different. Clearly we set some wrong expectations and that's on us. We appreciate all the feedback and can assure you we will take it all in and learn as a team. And that's Aaron Greenberg, who is the Xbox games marketing and that, would have fallen to him. So yeah, it makes sense why he is responding to people who are saying, hey, uh, you know, gameplay, like where what happened to that? Yeah, that that makes sense why Aaron Greenberg would be responding to this. But you know what? I I like that he he's actually like stepping up and responding to this situation because he's technically right that if it, they didn't say anything to hype it up, they said, hey guys, we're gonna be showing you some games that are going to be going to the next generation Xbox, and they never said anything about gameplay, that probably would have been a good showing for a lot of people. It wouldn't have been like over the top hype, like if they showed like a Halo or a Perfect Dark, a Fable, a Banjo-Kazooie, you can kind of go down the list of some of the IPs they had that they could show, but for what was there, that, that would have been a pretty good inside Xbox. Inside Xbox, they've set a pretty low bar, all right? So if they show up with those games and kind of back to back to back to back, you got Damon Baker in there occasionally and then more trailers, I think most people would have left that 26 minute or so presentation, okay. They wouldn't have been necessarily disappointed, but that gameplay word, you just, you had to say gameplay for next gen. Hopefully they do learn from this and if they don't have any meaningful gameplay, when I say meaningful, I mean, you're actually behind with the HUD and it's like, you know, five or six minutes of you going through a level uninterrupted. I wouldn't use the word gameplay like at all then. So hopefully yes, Microsoft learns from this. They say they're going to show something every month going forward. Maybe next month in June, they show the Lockhart system that keeps being talked about. And then July, they have their big blowout event where they should hopefully show gameplay. And in our last bit of news, let's talk a bit about the PlayStation VR 2 as Sony is rifling through patents for this thing constantly. Now, I will say, patents don't necessarily mean that it will be uh, applicable to the final product, but it does show us some research and ideas that that company has around a system or an accessory, an OS, features they have for this, is all kinds of stuff, right? So, to hear about all the crazy ideas and patents that Sony has around the PlayStation VR 2 is pretty exciting. And a patent has come out recently and has been discovered. And you can see some of that here. They had quite a few images of it. And this was discovered by the Game Post, 
who mentioned that there were two different patents that were found. One was actually for fighting VR motion sickness, and there were several different things that were described, whether it was kind of changing the image viewpoint and even coming down to shaking and moving the headset kind of around inside almost, maybe to give you a jarring effect to kind of bring you back to reality a little bit, very possible. But motion sickness is something that is complained about, so I do hope that Sony has that in mind and different ways that they can kind of battle against that because the last thing you want to be doing is feeling sick while you're trying to play a game. People already experienced that with first person shooters kind of, even going as far back as like the PS2, but more when we got to the higher frame rate stuff with like Call of Duty on the 360 and the PlayStation 3, that kind of the motion sickness would kick in with the first person shooter stuff. But VR, that is a problem they have to work through. Pretty cool to see that Sony has that in mind and maybe they can figure something out there. The other one, is, is funny because it's about full body tracking where you have sensors on your hands and your legs and of course your head probably with the headset. That is, that's interesting. So I guess you would be really walking around the room and in like a virtual environment. So you would need pretty much an entire fairly sizable room. But if you have like the HTC Vive, you've already maybe experienced some of this and have a room set up for it, but uh, hey, you know what? It, it is good to see Sony really pushing forward with their PlayStation VR 2 plans that I think will be shown next year. I think this year they just wanna get the PlayStation 5 out and then maybe starting uh, earlier next year into like when E3 time would have been, summertime, then they start getting into the accessories like the PlayStation VR 2, but no shortage of patents here and some pretty cool ideas. And we'll finish up with the comment of the day as you're seeing here. This is from Christian saying, I just hope the idea behind this smart delivery thing becomes the standard for the industry, especially Nintendo. I'm tired of these ports all the time. It feels unnecessary. Yeah, the Wii U ports to the Switch, yeah, they, they felt kind of unnecessary, but no one really played them as much on the Wii U. And I mean, look at Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. It's ridiculous, 25 million. I mean, it already sold over 8 million on the Wii U. Then you get some of the other games like Tropical Freeze, and, and I get why they started moving this stuff over, but you're right, I like the idea of smart delivery for all of these companies. The real problem and challenge are the third-party companies with EA doing some weird thing now with smart delivery where it's not even really smart delivery, it's like a time limit of a few months, and then you gotta buy the Series X version, even if you bought the Xbox One version before, it's, uh, it's a whole thing. But I do like smart delivery if that becomes like a thing globally across the industry. I think it's only good for consumers. Ladies and gentlemen, let's go do it here for Newswave. If you enjoyed this video, guys, hit that like button. It really helps out. If not, hit the dislike. Leave comments down below about everything we talked about, whether it's Nintendo doing cease and desist and even copyright strikes over this Mario PC port. Do you think they're overreacting or you think it's the correct thing to do to protect their IPs, maybe working towards that remaster? Also, what about Microsoft taking responsibility for the Series X event, saying they're gonna do differently going forward? Thanks, guys, for watching, and I'll see you next time.